Punky Duero from ICANN, who's going to tell us all about DNSSEC KSK rollover. So um, I'll basically squeeze in four topics. One is root zone DNSSEC key signing key, the key rollover. The second one is the availability of ICANN provided tools to help prepare for that. Third one is I'll provide an overview of our key management facility. And the fourth one actually is uh, our call for trusted community representatives. So starting with the root zone DNSSEC key signing key, that's the, basically the very top um, cryptographic key for the DNSSEC hierarchy. And to benefit the folks that are not aware of DNSSEC, um, it is basically adding a layer of security to DNS, um, helping uh, recipients of the DNS record uh, ensure authenticity of the data being received. And there's actually prior talks by Ed Lewis and Richard Lamb um, that puts it in detail about DNSSEC. Um, we're um, not enough time to talk about that. So um, since 2010, um, there has been a functional and single root zone DNSSEC key signing key that we call um, KSK 2010, obviously. And back in October um, 2016, we've created or generated uh, a new key signing key as part of um, information security hygiene. And this is basically, um, I'm taking this opportunity to remind folks that are um, running, op uh, operators that are running DNSSEC aware recursive servers to watch out for July 11 um, 20, this year. Basically what's gonna happen is the KSA, the new key, KSK 2017, is gonna show up on the DNS rec resource record, allowing um, if your software are enabled with RFC 5011, which is automatic updates, it will pull the new KSK 2017 and start the process of trusting that new key, which takes 30 days. So basically, this is the new key. As you can see, that um, that's gonna show up. It's just formatted for presentation purpose. That's why it's like that. That's what's gonna show up on July 11th. And should these operators running DNSSEC um, recursive server uh, would like to perform manual updates. Um, the, this is an ICANN provided tool that's available that can be used to hold that new trust anchor, which is the new KSK 2017. Also, I'd like to emphasize um, for the next couple of days for folks that are running automatic updates, RFC 5011, to go, use this um, test bed to perform testing and automatic, you know, their capability of RFC 5011. So um, that's about the KSK rollover. So I'm gonna discuss where's this key signing key stored? You might get you guys, some, some of you guys may wonder. I mean, I'm pretty sure it's not made public that much. So it's actually a pair of keys, um, public key cryptography. When it's public, it's distributed everywhere. Nobody cares where is it at, who downloads it, who has a copy. As long as the DNS recursive server has have a legit copy of it that's described in the prior uh, slides. And the counterpart is the private key, which is meant to be kept safe, secure. It's placed inside, it's actually a digital keys that's stored inside hardware security modules that can only be accessed using another set of uh, um, devices, which is uh, smart card credentials. And these smart card credentials are assigned to um, trusted community representatives, crypto officers. They take part in the operations and um, their de detailed roles are on the bottom part of the, um, that URL. And basically, they're assigned the smart cards, which they're given physical keys that has access to safe deposit boxes. And basically, inside the safe deposit boxes are the smart cards. It's housed inside that, which is for the HSM, it's stored in other materials. It's stored in a separate safe. So basically, these two saves are intelligently enough stored in a safe room. So basically, um, you know, this room requires dual occupancy, dual access, biometric scans, a lot of sensors, access control, and all those bells and whistles, surveillance cameras. And that safe room is housed inside another cage, a bigger cage. This is where we perform key ceremonies, which I can't describe because of a limited time. Um, this is basically where we perform um, digital signatures for the new keys, generation of new keys, key management per se. And it requires the same thing, dual access, dual occupancy. It's blanketed with a lot of alarms, redundancy, and stuff like that. So 
the location of these two key management facilities is actually not a secret. As part of ICANN's mandate to be to promote transparency, and basically our practices and this service is not a paid service. You know, we, we, re we, we rely on confidence for adoption. The location is, we have two locations here in the US. One is on the East Coast, which is in Culpeper, Virginia, and on the West Coast in El Segundo, California. And we perform quarterly key ceremonies, which we alternate on both facilities. So basically, you might wonder what happens if the HSM is inoperable, you know, um, basically, if we can't access the keys. This is where actually another set of trusted community representatives comes along, which is what we call recovery key shareholders. And these individuals are actually um, the ones that they hold, instead of physical keys like the other group, the crypto officers, they don't attend key ceremonies unless there's a disaster scenario. They, only, they hold uh, smart cards encrypting the backup of the key, the exported backup of the key. So they hold it, they only attest it annually that they have secure custody of it. And basically, um, they also, similar to all the, our trusted community representatives, they go out in public, share the news, basically um, invite trust or help the community trust the whole process. So all in all, we have 21 um, trusted community representatives, seven for the East Coast, seven for the West Coast, that participate <clears throat> um, on the key management uh, key ceremonies and the recovery key shareholders, which hold uh, the uh, encrypted, uh, encrypting backup. And their responsibility is basically to secure custody of their materials that they possess. For crypto officers, these are the physical keys and for recovery key shareholders, these are the smart card credential inside time prevented bags. So basically, we're, we're seeking volunteers. And last month, we have posted uh, basically to call all for experts, DNS experts, DNS experts, to take part in um, the operations of the, our you know, root DNS key signing key operations. And you know, the link below is basically the details about it, the selection criteria, and it talks about on um, how the selection process will, will be. And thank you, that's about it. Question? All right, thank you very much. Next up.